right, let's look at global max and min. So we've talked about local before, but maybe we want to know overall the entire function, the global. And so local is, is basically within an interval or near a certain point where global then is saying in the entire interval, this point is the greatest if it's max or less than if it's the min to any other values on the function. So you have to be careful, and that's what you're gonna see is the big difference in this section. If you have a closed interval, okay, so those circles are colored in, this is closed, that I could have a global max, okay, that's not on a hump, a critical point, right? So we know these are actual our critical points. And so you have to be careful that you have to check your endpoints if it's a closed interval. And of course, we might want to maximize profit, minimize cost, uh, surface area, maximize a harvest. And so how do we do this? Meaning, how do we find a global max and a global min when our, our domain is closed? Well, we do what we've been doing. We find the critical points. So that's just looking for where we have max and mins. And the difference now is we set the value of the function, okay, equal to the critical points, or not set it equal to, we plug in our critical points and we plug in our endpoints, whatever the largest value is, biggest number, global max, smallest number, global min. So you find your critical points just like normal, all right? And then from there, you calculate the value of the function at those critical points, but also at the endpoints. If you have a non-closed domain, then you do what we've just been doing. You just find your critical points and you figure out which ones are max and mins. Now on this graph, I know this function is never turning. So I know that this would be the lowest the function would be. So if I want to find um, global extrema on continuous functions, find the critical points, calculate the value of the function at the critical points, and then this is where you either used your plus and minus diagram or you took the second derivative. Uh, this is just a little activity that I typically have students do in class. Ask, you know, here's your function y equals x squared, what, and it's on this domain, all real numbers. What's the max? What's the min? Uh, so I'm looking for absolute global extrema. Absolute and global mean the same thing. I don't think there's any max because this function x squared is going up forever. And, you know, one of these would be like, well, what if I didn't know that? Well, you could do test points, you know, and just start picking points and seeing that this function is going up forever. Um, certainly by plugging in values in here, you can see that this value is continue, continuing to get larger and larger. Um, there actually is an absolute minimum though, because if I plug in a negative number, I'm, it's always going to be positive or because you knew what the graph looked like. What if I close the interval? What's the max? What's the min? Well, if I'm on a closed interval now, those are closed points and those become my max and my min. Uh, what if I have an open? So remember the open or the parentheses means you don't include that value and then a close. Well, the max would be on the closed, but then there would be no absolute min because I don't know how close you can get to zero, but I can always get closer. I can just add decimal places, right? Uh, and then finally, this last one, this is completely open. So there would be no absolute extrema, no, no global max, no global min. So if I want to find extreme values for this function, this is kind of what we've been doing. <clears throat> if you notice, there is no nothing that says this is a closed interval. <clears throat> start coughing. Um, but again, I kind of know what uh, parabola looks like. So let's see what we can find out. Let's find the critical points. Take the first derivative, first derivative, set the first derivative equal to zero and solve for your variable. That's my only critical point. 
I plug this value into my function because a critical point is an xy value. So I get my xy value. And is this a max or a min? I don't know. So you might say, well, I know you're sneaky, but I know that this is a min because I know this is a parabola. And then I say that ain't gonna fly on the test because Cindy don't, Cindy don't, no, no, no. You gotta prove to me how do you know that it's a max or min. And you either do it by picking values to the left and to the right, like we talked about before. And you see it's decreasing and you're plugging these into your derivative. Makes sense, right? If the derivative is negative, the slope's going down. Zero slope and then it's plug a value into the right increasing. And so this would be a global min, or I find it easier if the second derivative is easy to find, find the second derivative. You typically then plug in the critical point, but there's no place to plug in a critical point, but it's still positive. So it's happy, smiley face. So I know that this would be my min. All right, and our last example was what we've done before. Notice that was not on a closed interval, but what if it is on a closed interval and I want to find all critical points, inflection points, and then extreme values. So in other words, I want to know what are the global max and min. So happy you asked. So we know kind of sort of our steps, which is first to get something to write with. And the very first thing that I want to do, since I know I want to find my critical points, okay, I know I'm looking for critical points, I'm going to have to take the first derivative, so that's going to be 3x squared minus 12x. I'm setting this equal to 0. And now I'm going to solve it for x, so I probably would factor out a 3x, and that leaves me x minus 4. This makes it easy to factor. So I set my two values, 3x equals 0, and x minus 4 equals 0. I get my critical points, x equals 0, and x equals 4. These are my critical points. I have no idea if they're max or mins. We'll figure that out in a minute. Uh, let's find my inflection point. That's where you take the second derivative. I can do that looking over here would be 6x minus 12. You set the second derivative equal to 0. And then you solve for x. You're good at this algebra stuff, right? And so I get, that's a possible inflection point. Why am I saying possible? Because you watched the last lecture, right? So I have to plug in values into my second derivative to the left and to the right of my possible inflection point. And say, hey, that's pretty cool. Possible, you get it, two second derivatives. Yes, yeah, kind of funny, right? And so if I plug in a 1 here, I can see I'm going to get 6 minus 12, so that's going to be negative. If I plug in 3, 18 minus 12, that's going to be positive. The signs did change, so that would be my inflection point. All right. And so now I want to know what smacks, what's mins, and all that good stuff. So I could first just say, well, let's take our second derivative and plug in these values because that will tell me if it's concave up or concave down. So again, this is my second derivative. So I'm looking up, up over there on the screen. And I can certainly see that this is going to be less than zero, means that that's going to give me my max. Hello. And I can see this is going to be greater than zero. It's positive, And that's going to give me my, hello, my min. You weren't supposed to see that yet. And so from here, I don't know, is that a global max or a global min? Because I have endpoints. So then what I have to do is I have to plug into my original function way, way, way up there. My endpoints. That's not El Paso. So f of negative 1 and f of 6, 
I am plugging these into my original function. So 6, negative 1 squared, 6 cubed minus 6 times 6 squared. This one gives me negative 7. That gives me 0. And I have to plug my critical points in as well into my original function. So f of 0 and f of 4. So that gives me, I don't know why I put a 6 there. I looked at the second derivative. So 0 cubed minus 6 times 0 squared. So, so lovely I get 0. And then 4 cubed minus 6 times 4 squared. And I get, I wish you'd stop doing that. And I would get negative 32. So what I can see here then is remember when you have a closed interval, you have to plug your endpoints and your critical points. The lowest value in the interval will be my global min which we already knew, I don't know what happened, we already knew from up here that that critical point was a min, but we didn't know it was the global min. And then my very largest value, and I have two of them, stop it, would be my global max. So both of these would be global max. All right. And so, and again, we knew the critical point at zero was a max. So I have everything I need, and I can see that by my picture. So you see what happened, this endpoint, so back here, we said at that endpoint, we actually have, so we have two global maxes. Those are the highest values. And then here at my critical point um, was, is the lowest value of the function, because we cut it off here. And so that would be my global min. And so that's how you find um, global max, global mins, extreme values on a closed interval. And we will continue with this.